Have you ever had a great idea for a game, sat down to build it, and struggled to get the idea from inside your head onto the screen? I certainly have. I've been making games for several years now, but I don't know if I've ever made a prototype. Uh, don't click away just yet. The point that I'm trying to make is I feel like I'm missing something. Like I would sit down and I would try to put something together, but I kept treating the project like I'd be working on it for a year rather than a few days. I would be overly focused on how or what I needed to build rather than the why of developing it in the first place. So spending too much time making it right rather than done, and even if I did finish, I had no way of figuring out if the idea was worth pursuing. I needed some structure and a set of rules to help me focus on the necessary work that would help me illustrate my idea. So I did what any of us would do. I did some research. I read and watched just about as much as I could handle on the idea of prototyping, all of which helped me solve my problem, and now I'd like to share that info to get you started on your own prototyping journey. So enough of the intro, let's learn how to start prototyping. I imagine you already have tons of ideas and you're overflowing with so many cool things that you want to build. However, it can be a bit difficult to distill your grand vision into something that's easily buildable and testable within a reasonable amount of time. So first and foremost, your prototype needs to answer a question. It can focus on a feeling or a mechanic, like is it enjoyable to deliver mail? Is it overwhelming to control two characters at the same time? Can walking be used as a storytelling mechanic? A good question is small, understandable, and testable. You or someone else needs to be able to play your prototype and be able to answer the question you've come up with. Think to yourself now, what question will my prototype answer? Then after you've come up with a reasonable question, write it down and tape it to your monitor as a constant reminder. This question establishes the overall approach, but can also help you make micro decisions on what you should and should not be working on. So you may be thinking, Andrew, once we've come up to a question, how do we break that down into more actionable steps? That's an oddly specific question, but let's talk about that. For the next bit, we'll be using a mechanics mapping technique from Charmy Kim's article, Designing Around a Core Mechanic. The mapping we'll be covering has four major components. We'll focus on three of them in this video, the core mechanic, secondary mechanic, and progression, but we'll also briefly touch on narrative. Using our initial question as context, what's the core mechanic or purposeful interaction that the player needs to perform? This will be the mechanic that will be absolutely necessary to play your game. A few examples of this would be the portals in Portal, mining in Minecraft, or gliding in a short hike. But as you develop your core mechanic, this is also the stage where you'll most likely get a character moving around on screen, which is a good sign you're moving in the right direction. Once you have your core mechanic figured out, it's time to move on to the secondary mechanic, an additional, less frequent mechanic the player needs to perform. It sounds vague, but I would emphasize that it must complement the core mechanic to accomplish the next step we'll discuss. Um, some quick examples first, a secondary mechanic could be the companion cube from Portal, building or crafting in Minecraft, or climbing in a short hike. At this point, you may think you've got your idea all figured out, but we also need progression or a goal that the player needs to accomplish using your mechanics. A player goal is very crucial in building a successful prototype. Even if you get something working, that doesn't necessarily mean it works well as a mechanic. Even seasoned game developers like Jonathan Blow, developer of Braid and The Witness, have had this issue. In his talk, Indie Prototyping from 2007, Blow talks about spending an incredible amount of time on a gestural recognizer for a spellcasting game. He successfully got his core mechanic working, however, he didn't identify a reasonable goal for the player to achieve while using this mechanic. So as soon as he began to build the game around his gesture system, he quickly realized it was much too difficult even for him to use. Returning to our running examples, this could be solving puzzles, creating a small house to live in, or collecting an item in a hard to reach place. And before we continue, we need to make sure that our mechanics can be used to achieve our goal. And we could do that using the following statement. To goal, I must core mechanic and secondary mechanic, and to progress, I must complete goal. That may be difficult to understand, so let's plug in a game. I keep referring to portal, so let's try plugging that in. To solve puzzles, I must place portals and move cubes, and to progress, I must complete puzzles. Makes sense. Now try plugging in your items to see if it all makes sense. Then we can start building our prototype. But one last thing before we move on, we've talked a lot about what we need our player to do. If you're constantly asking yourself why the player needs to do these things, this is where our narrative would come into play. The narrative is going to provide more context for why the player is doing what they're doing, and it doesn't have to be terribly complex. Escaping an evil AI, surviving the night, or needing to make a phone call is enough to get you started. All right, now let's get started with building our prototype. We'll begin with building the functionality for the core mechanic. This is sometimes referred to as the toy of your prototype. This toy should be fun to play around with even when you're in an empty scene. Suppose you find this true for your prototype. In that case, it's usually safe to move on to developing your secondary mechanics and goal. And as you're going through this development process, I imagine you have all these other cool and neat ideas that you want to try out. But just to reiterate a point from earlier, before you do anything crazy, refer to the sticky note that you wrote down earlier. Because unless that shader or that algorithm is going to get you closer to achieving your goal, move on to something that will. 
One of my main reasons for making this video was my apprehension of and working in a project that felt frustrating. Um, I imagined myself swimming through a sea of if statements and components, wondering why I didn't plan more. This is a pretty overly dramatic take on the process. Um, I don't have to abandon all the principles I would normally use, um, but this is kind of where the gray area is. How do we apply some common principles without over-engineering? Be quick and have a game jam-like mentality. Work with the expectation that the code will be rewritten and fail quickly. You don't want to spend more time than you need. Second, what should you be doing when writing actual code? Small, straightforward components. If you're using Unity, purely use mono behaviors. Use descriptive class and variable names and update them when necessary. And finally, small and easily understandable functions. Some of these items will look familiar if you've done any research into the solid principles or clean code. Um, I'd recommend starting with these and then adding and removing rules for whatever works for your process. And speaking of process, what about using art in your prototype? I've seen some developers prefer to use store-bought assets. However, too many store-bought assets could create something that's overly disjointed, so it becomes distracting and difficult to evaluate. While some other developers just say to keep it ugly. As a word of warning, when adding art, it's going to be really tempting to add post-processing effects and particles, um, but don't attempt to go through the polish stage if you haven't answered your initial question. Remember, we want to answer our questions sooner rather than later. At this point, you should be good to go, but if you're still struggling to get your prototype done, I'd recommend looking into the Game of Week structure. It's exactly as it sounds. Each week, you make another prototype for one of your ideas. It may sound a bit crazy, but it has many advantages of forcing you to fail quickly, try out more ideas, and build confidence in the development process. There's a long list of articles and GDC talks going over Game of Week, so I'd recommend looking into that section in the description if you're interested. To wrap up, remember to start with a question, and then use that question to inform your mechanics and your player goal. Be quick, fail quickly, and constantly ask yourself if you're moving in the right direction. You can find all the links to the videos and articles used in this video down in the description below to help you along in your game development journey. I think that's enough for me. Hopefully you learned something, and I'll see you in the next one. And I'd also like to take a second to thank all of my wonderful patrons. I'd specifically like to thank Keith Bradner, Todd Andler, Andreas Brillen, Balthazar, Wong Pong Choi, Spectre XR, and of course Mark. Videos like this take a really long time to research and put together, so I really appreciate all the support. So thanks again. See y'all around.